Hey, Jesus followers, welcome to Hot Topic Tuesday. Hopefully this is on a Tuesday. Hot Topic Tuesday. And um, our goal and our heart behind having these conversations is taking the Bible and making it practical. And so I have two very special guests with me today. I have Omar Castaneda. Would, would that be how you say it? Is Castaneda. That Castaneda. Really? Yeah. Why the, that? It has like a mustache on the Oh, does it have the... It has a little squiggly. Oh, I, I've never, the Enya. The Enya? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, <laughs> Omar Castaneda and uh, Angelica. So just She's affectionately known as Ange around here. Uh, Omar and Ange with us. And so uh, we're going to do uh, our podcast title today is How to Be Great. How to Be Great. And um, But first, I'm going to kick it off with a opening segment called... I don't know. Funny questions. Okay. Funny questions. Okay. Anyways, uh, who should I ask? I'm gonna, Omar. I'm going to ask Omar first. That gives you a little yeah. time to answer. Okay. Omar, ready? For, here we go. You've been given an elephant. You can't give it away or sell it. What would you do with the elephant? Keep it. Keep it and do what? <laughs> Be my like today, if it was outside the youth center, what would you do with the elephant? I don't know. <laughs> That would, that would suck. <laughs> that would ruin my day. And what would you keep it? Keep it and do what though? Like you gotta, you gotta go home today. Like what would you do? Bring it in a little, show it around. Bring I it in. I, I would probably take it to Walmart just to across the street and then come back. <laughs> I don't want to be across, on the news. Oh my! I can just imagine <laughs> like you walking. Like what is? Oh my! What is happening? Okay, an elephant on orange thorpe. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, let's jump right into it. I just, my mind is, what would I do? I would, um, first call I would Judah. call, yeah, mm -hmm. I would call Kayla and the boys and get them over here. Probably take a picture on it. Um, probably do a photo shoot with it. Probably. A yeah. lot of promo at with a, the elephant. A lot of promo with the elephant. Maybe you could become <laughs> like the youth group mascot. That would be kind of dope. I would name him. Biggie Smalls. Wow. What an amazing <laughs> name for an elephant. <laughs> elephant. Biggie. Okay. Okay. Let's jump right into this. How to be great. Okay. So, um, as I thought about this, um, the scripture that came to my, to my mind, this is in multiple, of the multiple, of the gospels, but it's mainly in Mark chapter 10 where, uh, where James and John actually James and John's mother in one gospel is referenced to bring her sons to Jesus. And she says, I want them to sit on your right hand and on your left when they get to heaven. Right. And he kind of says, like, do you even know what you're asking? And he says, are you he, he basically lays out and he says, are you able to pay the price that I'm going to pay or or die the death that I'm going to are you going to drink the cup that I, I'm going to drink? And they say we're able to do it. And and uh, and so it's this interesting dialogue then where next the other disciples are looking at them like, what's your problem? Yeah. You know, like you guys are ridiculous. And Jesus turns to the disciples and he said, whoever wants to be great among you must become the least or become the servant, right? Basically, you've got to lay your life down. And Jesus showed us this by his life where he, the the king of the universe, comes down, not just doesn't come down in the form of a king. He comes in the form of a baby. He makes himself low, and he only comes to serve, right? He says the Son of Man did not come to be served, mm -hmm. but to serve. And so the reason why I have you guys on this Hot Topic Tuesday is because when I think of you both, I think of great servants. I think of people who serve, you know, for for you, you've been with Kayla and I for since like a long 2014, time. 2014, like, 2015. Yeah. So like almost like six yeah. years now. You've you've served in many different roles in the youth ministry. You've served our boys. You're like their like gaga. Hispanic yeah, <laughs> auntie, like something. Yeah, you're affectionately yeah. known as Gaga, mm -hmm. right? And so, not Lady Gaga, just Gaga. Gaga. And um, and Omar has served with me for a couple years now in the internship. Omar's a highly skilled oh, yeah. uh, man of God with the, the abilities that he has. Amazing. So when I think of you both, I think of great servants. And so what does, and I think it comes, not that it comes naturally for you guys, but my first question is, Ange, what compels you? What motivates you to serve Jesus and then ultimately serve people? Um, well, for me, I think of like I was raised like in Hispanic culture and like my dad taught me like when there's a party, like after you stay up and clean and like mm. you, you do that. And then coming 
to church and I did the internship for a year, like you're just giving God a year of serving. Mm -hmm. And I coming into it, I learned like why we do what we do. And after being saved and having that moment of like, I don't deserve to have what I have. Like I deserve hell. So mm -hmm. when I really took it like revelation, I grasped it. I was like, okay, like what can I do? There's nothing I can do to ever pay him back, but I know I'm called to serve. Yeah. And that scripture where it said, you know, like we come, he came not, to be served but to serve us and then right. i just really took that to like i want to do whatever i can to serve in any capacity whether it's would be to watch the boys when i didn't have a job or it was yeah. to do facilities because i needed like i think i started in high school just like cleaning because i needed hours but then it turned to like no because jesus wants me to do this and i know that even like when you're doing service production like omar does it like we're behind the scenes a lot and like, right. and I've learned that I'm not serving, I'm serving under people, but those people were appointed by God. So it gives me the whole like grasp of serving Jesus. And that means serving the people that he's put in, like in front of you and like to be the ones leading you. So it really made me just like every day wake up, I'm like, what can I do to better serve you? Whether yeah. it's like um, coming in and doing this chalk wall yeah. or it's, you know, anything exactly. like small, but it's like, if it means that I can serve him, like I'll do it. Right. And I love what you said too. There's nothing we could ever do to pay Jesus back. Like we we understand that that yeah. this whole life, if we lived perfect every day, it would never pay him back for what he's done for us. Yeah. Yet, it seems to me like what you're saying is it's an overflow of gratitude. Mm -hmm. That that atti the attitude of gratitude is the thing that motivates you to just to serve, to be yeah. a servant. And I, what a lot of people probably wouldn't know about you is you really coming out of high school were not set up for you know success necessarily with like a car and a house or, or you know these kinds of things but the lord has not a lot of people would know the behind the scenes of how much the lord has blessed you yeah and just piled it on and now you're living in your own place with some other girls and so how, how have you seen god bless you because um, of serving though you didn't do it for that yeah but he really has piled it on yeah i think the glory to glory because I've always seen it, it's like one glory can happen but then stuff has to happen before it can have another glory but then when mm -hmm. I like really took that scripture and I'm like God like you've blessed me and like and I want even like my blessings that I get to bless other people so when I That's got right. my car uh, before I even had one I was like God like it's not just for me like even mm -hmm. I got it last year and the years before that I'd never missed church service maybe like two or three but God always provided a ride for me to come and I was like I want to do that for somebody so this blessing isn't mine I love that. so I take everything that I have Ooh. and I want to bless other people with it so then that's why like I don't do it because of that like to get more but because I'm choosing to use this blessing and to bless other people and even serve them in my blessing that's, that's when really it keeps good, coming and coming so that's really good yeah, yeah. Uh, pastor Jerry said this to me one time and it really impacted me he said, God's blessing is not a cup, it's a river. Mm, that's and really that's ex exactly how I've seen you use what God has given you. You have, you are hospitable, you are giving, and people need to understand that that is the way to follow Jesus, that when you get something, you don't hoard it, mm -hmm. right? So, Omar, what compels, what compels you to serve Jesus and ultimately serve people? I think what, really what compels me to serve him is like just my love for him, just mm -hmm falling in love with Jesus like caused me to to go after him and I guess that that included serving because right. you know like when I like fell in love with Jesus like when I just found out how much he loved me I said well that's it I just want to know more of that and so I started giving everything up um, little by little and uh, really just whatever the Bible was saying like I was trying to do that and um, just, just serving like even here at the church really came from it came from like my own desire honestly i started serving at the church because you know i do tech and so i just like wanted to learn more about that but as i as i started serving like it, it was just so much more than just learning and just doing something it i really be, felt like i became part of a family and it was like i wasn't even like working when i was doing it i was having fun and I, I was just like enjoying life. Absolutely. And that is the way that serving should be. I mm -hmm. think everybody's felt that, that when you get and start serving, when you're, when everyone's in unity around a common mission, it really brings something that yeah. maybe some people miss in their family mm -hmm. or, you know, you can be living together, but not living on purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think when you start serving together with others, the culture should be, we are living for a purpose together and yeah. when you win battles together and when you, 
you know, see God move, it's really fulfilling. I want, I want to, I don't have Wait, this. Can I side note that? Oh real yeah, quick? please, please. I think with Omar, what I've learned, cause when you serve, like you see you do it amongst people, I've learned from him the past year, like you serve with joy and you're supposed mm. to do it out of joy. If yes. you don't do it out of joy, then you're not really doing it to the Lord. So I think you've really brought it to like, and uh, people have said it too, that when you serve, like there's like this very present and evident, like the way you present yourself and the way like, even like you smile all the time, I'd be like, I'm serving good, but I can serve better. Mm -hmm. And I think when you take it and not comparing, but whether like, okay, the God, that's what, like, you know, I want to be a servant. And if I can that's do it so with good. more joy, then let me do it. That's so, so I good. think like you bring that to the team of like, it is very yeah. true, actually, about Omar, what I've noticed about you. And sometimes you've confided in me things behind the scenes that you're battling. I Even recently, like you, uh, you lost your grandfather, right? Is that who it was? Yes. And you had shared that with me. Yet when you came even to serve while we would be filming here, you did not bring everybody down or bring the tone. You know, like yeah. you still can serve the Lord in a place of joy, even in the midst of some pain, right? And yeah. it's not a fake thing. It's not like I'm coming and going to put on a mask because yeah. Jesus does not ask you to put on a mask. You can still be real and still have pain, mm -hmm. but also have joy, right? That, yeah. That lives on the inside of you. So that is something I've noticed about you. And I want to talk about this idea of what it means to serve behind the scenes, because I think people can see, especially in the church in America, People can see maybe even what we're doing on YouTube or they can see the people who serve on the stage, the worship leaders, anybody who shares, and they can feel like that's the goal, right? But I think what they don't even see is that the majority of my job, I would say 98% of what happens in my job it's is like behind, behind the scenes. scenes. Yeah. It's all behind the scenes, right? And this, this idea of this Instagram, this image that I portray, this what's in front of everybody kind of stuff is not, that's not the end goal. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys would even know this. What we love more than, more than delivering a great service is hearing the story of one individual person who came yeah. to Jesus and had their life radically changed. So how, how do you guys settle into that being behind the scenes and being fine with not having this public recognition or, you know, how could yeah. you speak to that? Um, I think at first coming into like serving, well, I mean, doing the year of internship, you do so many things yeah. that people don't even know about. And right. I think um, you have to go into a season, not with an expectation, but like with an openness to like every day God's going to do something. So even too, like I for so long was comfortable in that spot of like being like behind the scenes, meaning like, you know, not being because I would like label myself like, you know, you are an introvert, like you're made to do this kind of thing. And when I broke out of that, I, was, I spent even more time in like doing behind the scenes stuff, but I took mm -hmm. it as a joy. And then even like when you told us to do the podcast, I was like, God, like you're, this isn't, this is like my first time doing something like this, but I'm still okay after this happens to come back on Friday and then do what we have to do here at church. It's like there's right. never like a special, like there's never a specific moment where like it's my time to shine. Like, no, you just have That's to be so ready good. in and out of season whenever God calls you to. So mm -hmm. I, this is considered serving as like me speaking about it. And then me um, tearing down after this is serving. Right. So I just want to serve them any way I can. Right. So That's I don't so see it as like, if that makes I sense. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of forgot the question, but I believe it was something about like. Just behind um, the scenes. Behind the scenes. What motivates you even though you're not in front of people per se? Yeah, I think um, something that I've heard a lot like being an internship and then I remember like reading the book um, that you gave to us it was like the seven habits of highly successive pe successful people effective yeah effective mm -hmm. um, I believe it was it said like your your private victory precedes your public victory yes and so like even you saying like you know 98% of what you do is behind the scenes like you know when you're even if you're gonna like minister to somebody or like whatever you're gonna do you have to first like know who you are inside that's right. uh, i think as christians that's easy for us cause, because our identity comes from who we are in jesus right yeah. and that's that it. should be like our overall confidence in everything we do like we we know that we're doing everything for the lord jesus and we like at least for myself i know that that could be my confidence in, in everything i do i just i know that if i'm okay within myself and with and I know I'm serving my God I know that I know that everything else is going to come from that 
I know that everything will stem from the inside yeah. mm-hmm. uh, from my relationship with him. Yeah. And I know that honestly, God, God brings the blessing, you know, like we, we work at everything we do, but the Lord is the one who puts his hand on us and makes everything to prosper. Yes. Amen to that. Yeah. Dude, that is so good. I, I think we need to do a part two yeah. of this talking about this idea of serving as opposed to what my identity is. Mm-hmm. So we're tossing it over to part two. <laughs> hey, uh, thank you guys so much for joining Hot Topic Tuesday. Uh, we love you guys, and we we just want this to continue to be a blessing to your life. Uh, if you haven't yet, follow us on Instagram. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We We are purely doing this so you can grow more in your relationship with Jesus. We love you guys. We'll see you at part two.